We don't obey Jesus for brownie points or for rewards. We obey Him because we love Him, because of what He's done for us. So we want to glorify Him. We want to lift Him up. The life is just like a heartbeat. It's up and it's down, and then you have big battles and big victories, and it just carries on like that. And if it's flat, then you're dead. And so many people are living this life of the same routine over and over, never truly living. What I just want to, I want to see you healed, that's all. So I'm sorry. Well then f wait three months and come back to okay. me, man. I don't need you and yeah. your God. If you don't receive any persecution in your life, you need to ask yourself whether you're actually doing the right thing because we are promised persecution. Deserts are painful parts of life that shape your heart because when you have no resources to lean on, the only thing you have is Jesus. And you cannot get to know Jesus when you are distracted with so many other things in life. He came to earth so that, so that every Christian can be a living stone. But these are dead stones. Yeah. We are now the stones. We are now where Jesus Christ is living. Lungs be restored again. Grow again in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you? Oh, Allah. <laughs> <laughs>
But if we keep going, we will also find those who are open. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's almost like God has prepared them. Yeah. Uh, and I would say for, for me, when, when I, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus sent his disciples out and, and he gave them very specific order what to do, like go out, you find a person of peace, you heal the sick, you preach the gospel. If people not receive your message, you take the doors off and move on. When, when you start to do it Jesus' way like that and, and say, Jesus, who is that person of peace? How do I find that person of peace? You hear those stories all the time where you meet people where they're saying, oh, it's so interesting, you stop me now. I got a dream from God yesterday. Or, so interesting, you stop me now because two days ago I just sitting with a friend and we were talking about it. Or Last week I look up in the sky and say, God, if you are there, send somebody to me. Those stories we, we get all the time if we really learn to walk by the Spirit. And, and I think this is something God has, Jesus has called us to do it in Luke chapter 10. And I've been evangelizing for years without seeing a lot of fruit. I saw more frustration and I did a lot of things. But when I started a few years ago, or stopped a few years doing it my way and really say, Jesus, what is it you have called us to do? You have not only called us to preach, you have called us to heal, to cast out demons. When we preach, people do not pray the sinner's prayer we are so used to. People repent, getting baptized, and receive the Holy Spirit. And, and that changes everything when you start to do that. Yeah, it does. Well, you have mm. something you call kickstarting. Yeah. Um, were you kickstarted? I, I actually, uh, <clears throat> many years ago, like 12 years ago, I was doing a seminary where I talked about how to heal the sick. It was the title, Heal the Sick is One Hour You Need, because the seminary was one hour. But I didn't want to just preach it, I want to show it. So I found a new believer and I said, can I borrow you in the next hour? He says, yes, okay, follow me. And I took him out on the street and I found a sick, I healed a sick, and then I said, now you do the same, and he did it. And it was the first time I ever did it like this. And what was interesting is was I told him, don't say this to anyone because I did it to illustrate something to my sermon the next day. But he was running around telling everyone about what he <laughs> had seen and heard and experienced. He could not stop telling about it. And there I discovered something. I discovered that this is discipleship. Discipleship is not only teaching about it, it's actually showing people how to do it. And then we start to do it and it had exploded. For example, I found a guy in Sweden. Uh, I'm from Denmark. I found a guy in Sweden. I kickstarted like three years ago. I kickstarted him. He kickstarted somebody who kickstarted somebody who kickstarted somebody. One and a half year, I was back in Sweden. And there I saw six generation. I have to kickstart him who have kickstarted somebody who have kickstarted somebody who have kickstarted somebody who have kickstarted somebody. Kick somebody. And two of those people alone have seen more than 1,000 healing that year. Wow. So we see like 100,000 people are getting healed through the kickstart. And it's something all other ministries start to do now where we actually take people and show them. Healing is then just the beginning of it. We want to see people safe. We want to see people born again. And that is the same idea. It's like when you learn to ride a bicycle, when you first have the balance on the bike, it can take you all over the world. And you know you can do it. When you first take that first step, heal the first sick, cast the first demon out, baptize the first one in water and Holy Spirit. When you've done it one time, you know you can do it again, and you can do it again, and you can do it again. And, and this is what we call kickstarting. Yeah, and I would call it discipleship. It is. It's, and the it's same exactly word. what Jesus did. He would do and yeah. teach. Yeah. Sometimes he would teach and do, yeah. but he would always be performing, and then he would say to his disciples, yeah. Luke chapter 10, it's your turn. But, but if, I'm going to stay back here. You're going to go. But if you look at church, I think very often we have been preaching to, to the people in church what they need to do. But then Monday morning, they're out there alone. And, and it's a big step for people. It's a big step to do it when you're alone. But if you say like, Jesus, come and follow me, I will make you fishers of men. When you then go with somebody who have more experience than you have, that person beside you actually take away all your fear. Mm. Because you know in your head that, okay, that person beside me, he know what he's doing. The responsibility is not on me. I just do what he tell me to do. And then first time they do it where you stand and look, 
next time you walk a little further away, to do it alone and find out it had nothing to do with that person. <laughs> it's actually me who do it because of my faith. And when you have done it by yourself, you can go and show other people how to do the same. You're, you're into, mm. onto something with distractions, that our mo modern life has a lot of distractions. Mm. How does that hurt our relationship with the Lord? We often, when we are preaching, we, we talk about Mark chapter 4, where we see the four ground. The man who saw the seed is falling in four different grounds, but only one bear fruit. One of the ground is the one who hears the word and says and comes and steal it right away. This is those people we meet out on the street who don't want to listen. We just take the dust off our hand and feet and move on. Then we have ground number two. This is people who hear the word. And it looked good for a time, but then persecution set in because of the word and the fall away. Persecution is not our enemy. Persecution is actually our help. Persecution shows how deep the fruit have gone in a person's life. There's two kinds of people. There's those people who experience persecution and fall away, ground number three. And then there's those people who experience persecution and fall on their knees and pray and seek God like never before, and therefore they grow. Then there's ground number three there, where Jesus is talking about something that is dangerous, something that is deceiving, that is growing up beside us. And what is that? That is this deceitfulness of riches. The biggest problem we have in America and in Europe, where I come from, is, is we are too busy. Mm -hmm. We have created a life with house and dog and garden and all of that. And we wake up early every morning, every morning we go to job, we come home for job and we are tired and we sit in front of the TV a few hours and then a new day and a new week. If we're not aware of all of that, we will never bear fruit. And, and we need to look at those things. We need to change our lives so we have time to do what is important. A few years ago, me and my wife, we were living busy life. We had a good job, had a good house, was busy like everyone else. And one day I got fired. Yeah, <laughs> I was not happy when I got fired, but it, it, it woke me up because suddenly I could not pay the bills anymore. And I stood there and I found out that the last few years, God had disappeared from my life. I didn't have time to pray. I didn't have time to seek him. I didn't have time to obey him. But when I got fired, I needed him. And I started to seek him and I was fasting 40 days and God started to speak to me and the Holy Spirit led me and, and it became a journey where at one time we, we actually felt we should start all over. So we got rid of the house, we got rid of everything. We lived in a small basement with three kids. Everyone looked at us like we were crazy, but we had something our friends did not have. We have time, time to obey God, seek first the kingdom of God and do his will. And there we then experienced the blessing, how things was added to us. And I think that Satan had been um, deceiving us as, as the church where most Christians, the only time they really have is two hours every Sunday. Right. Because they are distracted with this life, with the deceitfulness of riches, the worries and longing for other things. Right. And we should have two hours every day. We should have more time yeah. to Tide, just... Tithe our time to him yeah. and then go out and do what he tells us yeah. to do. And I often yeah. say like most people out there, there's nobody just before they die who look back at their life and think, why, why did I not get a bigger TV when I had the chance? <laughs> or, or why didn't I get a bigger car and work some more? But there's people out there who one day is going to look back at their life and say, why did I live for what other people expected from me instead of just doing what Jesus wanted me to do in living for him and serving him? And I think that God is calling people to really be radical to really follow Jesus. And if that means sell everything and give it away and come and follow him, then That's this what is what to do. Yeah. I appreciate it. Appreciate you. And if you or your church would like to host a free screening of that wonderful movie, The Last Reformation, The Life, all you have to do is go to their website, tlrthelife.com to sign up. Free screenings begin this month on February 25th. And then the worldwide movie release will be March 31 on YouTube. Uh, and if you want more information, all you have to do is go to CBN.com. We'll be glad to do it and uh, look for this. This is a, it's a, it will really thrill you. So watch the movie, get a free screening with the group, uh, watch it when it comes out. And Torben, thank you. Yeah, thank you. God bless you.